Online Broadcast Network. After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Oh, Afterbuzz TV. After Buzz TV. The destination for TV superfans. Producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows. Interviewing celebrities and showrunners. And bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, everyone. Oh, boy. Here we go. Oh, gosh. This is going to be an episode. Welcome to our Survivor After Buzz TV After Show, Episode 7, Season 29, Million Dollar Decision. I Quitters with big boobs. That's what I'm calling so it. I'm so fired up so about pissed. talking about tonight's episode or last night's episode. I am beyond pissed off. Oh, yeah. No, I'm right there with you. I, it, seriously, I, I can't believe it happened again, and I can't believe I had to sit through another episode of watching someone quit. So the biggest thing last night, another quitter on Survivor, Julie, John Rocker's girlfriend, quit last night. It was pathetic. Pathetic. It. I watched it this morning. I didn't get to watch it last night. I watched it this morning, and I have been pissed off and in a bad mood the entire day. <laughs> I you know, it's I in my bones. I watched last night, so I've been pissed off and in a bad mood since last night. I don't think I would have slept if it, I went to bed knowing that happened. I well, had friends texting me. I knew something big happened because I had friends texting me, what do you think a survivor would do and all that sort of stuff and I I knew something big. I thought it was maybe a big blind side at the merge or something like that, but we knew someone was quitting. It happened last night, but the way it went down, which we're going to talk all about I'm pissed off. It's disgusting. And when it just gets in our bones, like this is the third season in a row that we have had a quitter. Blood versus Water, we had Colton quit. Last season, we had Lindsay quit. This season, we have Julie quit. When we have three seasons in a row where super fans who would die to get on the show, me like included, <laughs> would die to get on the show, give everything up to get on Survivor. Then we have people like Julie who probably have never seen the show before, who got on it just because of stunt casting with John Rocker and he needed his girlfriend to go on, so he would go on. On, and then he leaves and she can't be there any longer and she just gives up. It was so lame. I mean, you and I, when we watched the episode where she was crying in yeah. the rain, this is the worst night of my life. You know, at least then she, I could understand where this emotional outburst was coming from. But before she quit, there was nothing no. that happened other than she completely isolated herself mm -hmm. over some stupid freaking trail mix. The like, come on! The trail mix scandal. Okay, uh, that's how I started watching the episode, because people on the East Coast yeah. were tweeting, saying, oh, Jerry, you're going to be so upset. It's beef jerky scandal yes. all over again. I just want to say to all of you out there who think that's the same thing, it's not! <laughs> because trail mix was given to them at the merge. Beef jerky was smuggled into the game from the outside world. Yeah, and my dad texted me. Totally right. My dad texted me. He <laughs> said, did you hear about the huge scandal on Survivor? I heard a radio ad for it. One, yes, it was a scandal, but it's not a scandal. Like, it was a stupid decision by Julie to hoard food in her bag and not share it with the yeah. entire tribe. That was, it's not a scandal. It's a stupid, dumbass decision. Very stupid. Because she didn't care about the game. She no. doesn't care. She doesn't care about Survivor. How awkward was it that every single person was standing around going, oh, the trail mix was sure must have been good, <laughs> and she didn't say a single thing. I, I really honestly hope yeah. that that was editing, but somehow I really doubt no, it. No, I don't think she ever said anything about the trail How mix. How could you not say anything? Like, at least, like, hey, you guys, yeah, I know, I yeah. did, I'm sorry, here, let me... Oh, wait, hey, you guys went in my bag. That's not cool. I would have turned it around and then been like... Yeah. You can have what's left. Because, I mean, she it's she knew so everybody was talking about it. So she she knows going back to her bag 
that trail mix is missing because they ate it. Yeah. And then you don't say anything. Even when, before Julie ended up quitting, which we're going to dissect in a second, she went up to Missy and confided in Missy as her, her only friend out there that she was really down. And Missy had talked her up before. And before that, Jeremy had talked her up. Everybody is, and we've seen this before in Survivor, stay in the game. We need you in the game. We need your number. We need your number. So she confided in Missy. She didn't even confess to Missy or that we saw. Also, I feel ostracized because I stole and hid trail mix and everybody figured it out. I know everybody figured it out, but I just don't want to talk about it. I don't it. know how to approach this. Can you please help me how to figure how to get back into the tribe? Anything, anything would have been better than nothing. It was so awkward yeah. and so bizarre. And her, you could just, her head was not in the game. Her no. head was not in the game the entire time. And there was somebody sent me a text message of a post Jeff Profs made. Like, you know, usually when we have quitters on Survivor, it's on us, you know, if we cast them and we know they're going to quit. Well, we had a feeling or something about that Julie would quit. You know, <gasps> like, what, what the yeah, what the hell? Then like, if, if casting has an inkling that this woman there. does not have the grit and the determination to get on the show, then don't put her on the show. Yes, they've been asking John Rocker, I think in one of his interviews he did, that they've been asking him to do Survivor a couple seasons now, and this twist got him to do it because he could bring his loved one on, and that's basically one of the reasons why he wanted to go on this season was so he could bring Julie and his loved one, whatever. It is so frustrating to see this on the I'm show. I'm sure it is for you because you yeah. want to be on the show more oh. than anything in the whole world. More than anything. And everybody knows that in my life and family and all that sort of stuff. And and even I relate to any other, I know other fans, friends of mine who want to be on the show so bad. It is disgusting how obsessed we are with Survivor. <laughs> 5,272 days have gone since I watched the episode of season one premiering knowing that I wanted to be on this show. 5,272. 72 days. That's sick that you know that. Yeah. And you know what? <laughs> Tomorrow it's going to be 5,273. And I will keep counting until Jeff Probst gives me that million dollars. Or at least just let you have a chance <laughs> at I know. Million. But I mean, n- it's not on. about me. Let's be real. Yeah. At least give Justin a freaking chance Thank you, Jerry. to win the million dollars. Thank you. I love that. Like, I, whether you win it or not <sighs> is beside the point. I just really. want an interview. That's it. But this is not because about me. Because guess what, Justin? You might get on the show and there first. might be somebody out there who <laughs> you align with who quit and that is what pisses me off too so you, we go back to the quitting decision so she trails off julie trails off and in comes jeff probst this scene jeff probst i come on everybody sit on the log i love you no no not before that jay i love jeff probst i idolize <laughs> jeff probst he is one of my heroes i will admit that i love jeff probst i did not enjoy this scene when he sat down with julie and became dr phil and tried to like dissect why she's quitting and he was all doctor therapist with her and then he let her go what happened to the jeff probst that used to give people shit well, for... I thought that he actually tried pretty hard. I felt like more so than I've ever seen him try before. When Colton quit yeah. the first time, we all know that he did. Yeah. He did. He was just like, oh, how you doing? Okay, you don't feel good. All yeah. right, whatever. But, I mean, I feel like he definitely tried to keep her in the game and tried to get her head back in it because he's never actually said to anybody before they quit the words that he said, which yeah. were, do you realize that your decision mm-hmm. might affect someone else's chance yep. at a million dollars yep. and she could have cared less well I have to do what I need oh, to no. do for myself because yeah. my loved one's not here guess what lady <laughs> when you play on a season with no loved ones how do you think we feel Yeah, like get over it Yeah, and I, I understand where you're coming from that Jeff he definitely talked her through it and she, she was not changing her mind but Jeff Probst used to attack quitters with so much more zest and so much more uh, just kind of we don't deal with quitters on Survivor, you know. You think so? Yes. I don't think I've ever seen him yes. really get mad. No, when like Austin, you know, he wouldn't even snuff out his torch at Tribal Council in Austin quit and all I these sort of things. That. Yeah. Wait. He used to be so much harder on quitters than he is with Lindsay last year with when she got in that fight um, with Trish and then, you know, it was just kind of like, oh, what's going on? He's talking through and then he lets him go. Maybe it's because they just realized these people are duds. Let's let them go. You know, that might be the decision. But Jeff, <laughs> I feel like, and I've had people 
tweeting me and messaging me on, you know, my friend saying Jeff used to be so much harder on quitters and he's not doing that anymore. You know what I think they should do? They should uh, not give them any of the money that they earned because, you know, you make more money the yeah. more time you're out there. Oh. If you quit, you should you're forfeiting your entire paycheck that well, you just made. And she better not be on the jury. She better not be on There's the jury. There's no way in hell she can be uh, on the jury. Remember when Purple Kelly and Nayanka quit? They were on the jury in, in Nicaragua. Uh, Nicaragua, never go film in Nicaragua again. All it produces is quitters. Yeah, someone tweeted that. <laughs> it's just like, come on now. Yeah. And so Jeff, you know, one of the things Jeff said that I was just kind of like, come on. He was like, you know, when we're kids, you go to summer camp and you leave your loved ones. So that shows that you can leave your... <laughs> Come on, Jerry. You're not even here as long as you would be at summer camp. Yeah. That, that girl never went to summer camp. <laughs> Give me a break. She has, like, totally low self-esteem. Like, she even went into this whole thing about, I'm tired of people talking about my boobs. Mm -hmm. Then don't get size Zs, lady. If you don't want people <laughs> talking about them, don't get them where they're so big that they're in everybody's face. Yeah. Like, let's be real about it. And then after after she quit, she went into the whole, like, I, you, know, I, you know, I know that Missy and Jerry me, they just want me to stick around for their game. I'm just a number and vote for them. That's but you know what? what Survivor is! I have to do what's good for me and you know what? I know there's going to be backlash. I can deal with it. We are pissed off with you as a player in the game. I don't know you personally. No, she's not a player. Yeah, That's she's not, the thing. She's not a player. She was dead weight brought along yeah. by that racist guy. <laughs> Homophobic freak. So... <laughs> It's his fault she's there. She was never a Survivor player. She was never. She no. was never. And in my mind, I'm, I'm sure that Jeremy would have loved to be sitting next to her in the end because no one would vote for that in the end. Right. Ever. And I loved this episode, Missy in this episode. We'll talk about Missy throughout the episode. I, got, I give major points to Missy as a player <laughs> in this game. But... I just I can't get over her fringy bikini. Yeah, Every that's time just I see it, I'm no, like, that's tacky. It's like a cow, one of those cowboy jackets, <laughs> which I actually have with the fringes on it. I'm always like, yeah. Hey. And everybody's got cowboy boots. Did you notice that? Yeah, this episode? It's, a, it's a very West, southern cast. Wes, Keith, and Missy all have cowboy boots. Yeah, just something I noticed. It's crazy, but <laughs> it is so disheartening, and I can't repeat that enough. Watching people quit on Survivor. Oh, it's disgusting. And I will say this: I've been on my phone tweeting all day with Troy Zan and Holly Hoffman. Mm -hmm. And it is the general consensus across the board with any of us survivors that have played once or multiple times. Yeah. Anyone who quits, we have absolutely zero respect for. And when those people show up at the charity events really? and the reunions and all that... We, are they shunned away? They are totally really? shunned. Yes. There, I mean, <laughs> there's always a few people that hang out with them, but I don't. I don't want anything to do with someone who quit because Thank it, you. it took away the yeah. opportunity from some from somebody else who's yeah. been trying like you yeah. to get on the show forever. Mm -hmm. It's just so disheartening and it makes the it makes the whole survivor brand seem cheap to me when people just like, ah, I'm done. I know. And it's three seasons in a row we've had quitters. It's It's, it's so annoying and it's so frustrating. It's setting a precedent now because <sighs> people, I think, when they go in to play Survivor are actually thinking in their head, eh, if I can't handle it, I'll just leave. Yeah. There has got to be some serious ramifications set in place for people who quit. Yeah. This has got to set a precedent. I agree. Because like you said, three seasons in a row, that is ridiculous. It's terrible. It's I can't even I can't deal with it. And then <laughs> and then so Julie quit. We get her BS kind of confessional of I'm doing this for myself. Whatever. Whatever. Get off the island. I hope you you better not be on the jury. She she better not be on the jury. I'm sure she's she not going to. She better not be on the jury. Go have fun with John and your you know Ponderosa and get off the show. I okay, here's the thing. Now, I John was voted off way towards the beginning of yeah. this game. He's not at the Ponderosa. He's off in some country traveling somewhere. Oh. And if if Jeff and, and everyone else is smart about it, they won't send her to go anywhere where he is. And he will, they will make her suffer continually yeah. not being with her loved one. Yeah. That's what should happen. Well, but hopefully out of the end of this, she somehow grows as a person and character <laughs> building. I don't know. I hope, Julie, you get some character building out of this. I... And... Doubt it. Enjoy your quittingness. The, no, the character building part is when you stay in the game. I know. It's it's just I can't even I can't deal with it. I I mean it's it's sad. There was a merge that happened this yeah. episode and we can't even get into that because we're both so freaking I know. pissed about what but, happened. And we will. And I this is said like there were times today where I was on uh, the verge of tears thinking about it. It's just 
when it gets in your bones so much how frustrating it is to watch quitters. It is just, I can't do it. Okay, so we both agree she should not be on the jury. Yeah. Um, I Somebody tweeted something about... Uh, somewhere Jeff said things were going to change, and it was I think that was last season after uh, Lindsay quit. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. I guess we're gonna have to wait and yeah, see we'll what see. that thing is. But I mean, not to have tribal council then and is that's weird. What, but because there's a, I don't remember no, that ever happening it, before. It has where people have quit and then they don't go to tribal council. It's it's that's what I, I someone on my Facebook wrote. You know, all about the quitting, and I said. And I was trying to look it up today. There have been t- there have times when it's different, where they still go to tribal council in that episode, and then they don't. And I feel like more times than not. And I was trying to figure it out. Yeah, I'd love to. Know. I don't know off the top of my head, and I I was really busy at work today. I, how many times have they gone to tribal council? Somebody on YouTube can figure this out. How many times have they gone to tribal council in the same episode that someone quits versus not gone to tribal council and it's been completely canceled? YouTube fans, please help us out with that. And I think we've spent enough time on the quitting. We've given Julie enough time, and we will not talk about Julie anymore. I guess so. Yeah. I know you will come back to it. We eventually will. But, you know, uh, in this episode, we did get the merge. That was one of the the big things in the episode. We merged at 12 people. Eight out of 12, eight are pairs. Yeah. So compared to Blood versus Water 1, we have four sets of pairs and then four singles, including Jeremy, Julie, Natalie and Alec. But when did they merge that season? Like, how many of them were there? Uh, I feel like I don't there weren't remember. this many. I feel like it was ten, maybe. Yeah, I feel like it was definitely later I'm in the game. Not sure, and I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure. Yeah. And that doesn't make me not a fan. <laughs> yeah. But <people. laughs> but it's it is a lot having the twelve. There have been sometimes it's, it's a lot. It's it's a lot of people. But what is different about this that it feels a little anticlimactic with there being so many pairs. It's almost as if there's only eight people in the game right now because you have. Have all the pairs almost I consider them as like one vote and one brain and that takes eight people and brings them down to four and then you have those four singles so it seems it's all about like the pairs pairing up so whereas last blood versus water it was all about the individuals maneuvering within the game I thought that was a lot more interesting than what we're starting to see with the pairs and it just is the pairs going to the pairs and that sort of thing and it's kind of this whole episode was the Josh versus Jeremy show yeah, I love Jeremy. I like Jeremy, I too. Really I'm do. rooting for him, and he's not going to make it. I don't know. It's going to be I Josh. I think he might still pull something out. I'm hoping. Yeah. And I personally, I think that's why they canceled Tribal Council, because I think Jeff knew that Jeremy would be going. Mm-hmm. And he's such a great player. Yeah. And when you got a lame person quitting, what you want is people left in the game who are really playing hard. Yeah. And he's and playing Jeremy's hard. Jeremy's playing hard. I really like Jeremy. I want him to go far. I, I've been saying from the beginning, I really feel like Josh is. And I think that well, let's sign the check to Josh. I really think Josh is going to win this season. Mm-hmm. And well, I, I think one of the best quotes of this episode was, Josh talking about how, well, you know, who would win? Broadway stars who lie lie to everybody all the time or, you know, or the firemen with two kids. You know, it was a very valid point, but it was kind of funny. No, it was. (laughs) Here's the thing. I hate when they uh, people go the like Josh. Yeah, he. So Josh going into the merge had Josh Reed. Then he had Wes, who brings Keith along with him, his dad. Then he had Alec, so he has five. Then you have Jeremy, who has, uh, we have seven versus five, because he has his old ties with John. He was really close with John, and then Jacqueline can bring John. He's very close with Missy. Missy can bring Baylor. Then he has Natalie and Julie. So that's seven versus five. Jeremy should be in a good position. But one of the most interesting points is when Josh went to Baylor to talk to Baylor about reconnecting, she completely shut him down, basically, because she's going to go with Missy, her mom, and mm-hmm. go with the other side. And she was... Well, that's why I think Jeremy still has a chance. Well, but then what? this is where that quote came in. When Josh realized, which Reed, that was very awkward trying to get Baylor to talk. And she's definitely not with us anymore. So we need to do another move. And their move is, let's talk to John. And Jacqueline. And Jacqueline, who... Who if, kiss way if too I, much. If I hear them say so that they're... If I hear other. them say that they are the power couple one more time <laughs> I might go I'm like like I think they're a cute couple and they're a beautiful couple and they're really attractive and they so far and their other tribe had some good moves but they aren't the power couple yet no and like no. I said they kiss too much it's really they annoying kiss a lot. So, hey baby <laughs> mac and cheese <laughs> 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 I can't take um, it <laughs> 
<laughs> be, yeah, it was, I was just thinking that would be great if they announced at the finale she's pregnant and it's a survivor baby from being oh on the God. island. But, you know, let's not go there. Uh, so then they approached them and said, let's keep the couples together. Let's take out all the singles and start with Jeremy and let's keep the couples together. And John will entertain any idea, which is good. You should. And then he just bounces back and forth, back and forth. And it seemed like if they would have gone to tribal, that John and Jacqueline would have sided with with Josh, Josh and Reed, yeah. which would have been idiotic. Yeah. In my opinion, John, Jacqueline, stick with Baylor and Missy, who you developed a good trust with over on the other Koyopa. John, stick with Jeremy, who you have been with from the beginning of the game. Why are you going to go to Reed, Josh, Alec, Wes, and Keith, who you don't have a strong connection with. It didn't make sense. No. Why would they go with that side versus the other side? Well, I just think it's a really lame uh, t strategy to say, oh, let's keep all the couples together. Yeah. Because truthfully, when you're in a group of couples, it, you're as much a target as anybody else. But mm -hmm. when you're in with a couple, another couple and singles, you have the numbers and you can pick the singles off one by one by one. So I don't, I didn't really understand why they would just be like, oh, well, let's keep all the couples together. Well, I think that was Josh's only, his only play. And yeah. I think that he read the scenario and read the scene very well. And this is why I think Josh is going to win. He read the scene. Baylor, I can't, Baylor's not going to happen. I can't work with Baylor. Missy has so much control over Baylor that Baylor's not going to be who we can switch. Maybe John and Jacqueline. And that is the two that they can switch. And I think last episode likely may have switched if they would have gone to tribal council we'll and devote Jeremy. Know. We'll never know. We'll see what happens yeah. next week. You know, we saw next week they're teasing the big John versus Jacqueline. Jacqueline wants to stick with the girls. John wants to go with the guys. Jacqueline's sick of the, and Missy are sick of the guys. They're chauvinistic pigs, as yeah. they said. And John, you know, they're arguing, they disagree in what way they should go. Which is really good for Jeremy. Because Jeremy Hopefully. is really good with dealing with girls. And it does help, though, that Jeremy wanted to keep Julie because of the numbers. When the whole trail mix fiasco went down, John was very pissed, along <laughs> with everybody. But John was extremely pissed. And that, I think, pushed him to screw Julie and Jeremy in this alliance. I'm going to flop to the other side because I don't want someone like Julie in my alliance. So with Julie gone, he so can... So with Julie gone, yeah. that's better for Jeremy, hopefully, that he can pull John back in and, you know, pull John back in. But I really give Josh a, l a little credit. I think Josh is smart. And he and Jeremy even said it this episode. Josh is the only one who is hardcore playing on his opposing alliance. That's why it's Josh versus Jeremy because those are the two big guns right now trying to get control of this game mm -hmm. and i think though underneath it all i think this episode we really saw that missy is a gamer and missy is a player and one of the scenes that i love the most was when the motherly advice the motherly she's advice. like sometimes you just got to be a little fake girl mm -hmm. <laughs> so after baylor talked to josh mm -hmm. and she, josh tried to flip her over to work with them baylor was upset you know kind of like mom i don't want to lie to him and you know that sort of thing and missy was such a gamer yeah. honey this is a game put on your face be phony lie you're gonna have to get your hands dirty and we now, gotta do this well now we know why she's divorced three times <laughs> 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 i mean it was funny to watch her like oh this is such a great moment in my relationship with baylor because i get to be her mom again because because i've had three divorces she's not you know ever been able to look up to me because yeah. i'm this failed mother yeah. but now in the game of survivor where you have to stab people in the back, yeah. cheat and steal. <laughs> I'm a great example. And she just loves me like a mom again. Hey, she did say, I get to redeem myself with my daughter. And you know what, Missy, if you were my mom and I were out there and didn't know what to do, which would never happen. <laughs> I would say, Mom, I love that you can separate the game from emotion and play this way. Thanks, Mom. And then you'd vote her off. <laughs> you know, well, what I was thinking in that moment was this mother-daughter relationship is somewhat the opposite of what we Laura saw with Laura Sierra. and Sierra. We yeah. had Sierra coaching Laura, you know, the, the daughter coaching the mom of what to do, and now we have the mother actually saying, Honey, no, this is dumb. We are not going with that side. I have 
I have a connection with Natalie, with Jeremy, with John, with you. We can play these people on this side and have a majority and get to the end. So I really liked seeing Missy as a gamer in this episode. And what we in the beginning of the episode, right after Tribal Council, Missy and Baylor last episode voted for Keith to split the vote, and they didn't tell Keith. He was pissed off because he got votes and they didn't include him in the plan. Missy, unlike Julie, is able to openly talk about her decisions and mistakes it wasn't a mistake it was a gameplay but she confronted keith right away the next morning hey let's talk about last night we voted for you because i'm protecting my daughter you would do the same for wes if you thought dale had an idol well you know keith then said you should have talked to me about it and you didn't you know that sort of thing but missy is playing the game how funny was it that Keith totally forgot his own son's birthday? Yes! And somebody else wished Wes happy birthday. And Keith was like, I don't know. Josh, the first person oh, to wish him a happy birthday. Josh? He's on his game, Josh. I He's did not investing know that. personally with all these contestants and players. Something as simple as the first person to wish him a birthday, and his dad didn't even do his it. His dad was like, uh, I didn't even realize what day it was. <laughs> happy birthday! Here's a crab! <laughs> Thanks, Dad, for giving me crab. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you just said it. Yeah. Thanks, Dad, for giving me crabs. <laughs> he, that's what he did. He gave him some crabs. <laughs> that was a funny scene uh, <laughs> that his dad didn't even remember. Yeah. Keith is really likable. I love Keith. I love that he spits all the and time. And he still has that idol, and nobody knows he has that idol. I love that Keith has an idol no one knows about. So, I, lo- I think Keith is going to do really well. He is. I mean, he got immune last night the mm-hmm. first thing i thought was okay he's got immunity yep. and, an, and an idol yeah this guy i think he's gonna he's just kind of blindly and ignorantly make his way to the end and that happens a lot it does <laughs> and he's just he's very likable so let's talk about keith did win the immunity challenge what did you think of the first individual immunity challenge it was an endurance challenge where everybody had to hold rope that was balancing a circular board that they had to put a ball there's always balls in Survivor. <laughs> balls and, and ball. tossing. <laughs> and then every 10 minutes, they had to then, you know, drop the board and move further back on the rope. And then when they were the furthest position back on the rope, then they had to put two balls on and see who could bounce longest. Keith won. I knew won. it wouldn't last long once there was two balls in there. Yeah, the two balls thing is is crazy. <laughs> If you notice, there's all guys left. <laughs> guys are good at balancing two balls. <laughs> guys are better at balancing two balls, right? Uh, Jeremy, Jeremy was, was the, the first, first one out. out. Jinx! You owe me a Coke. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, Jeremy was the first one out, which was a little surprising. Well, I love that he used that to his advantage in every argument. He's mm-hmm. like, everybody thinks I'm this big threat. Look at yeah. me. I suck at challenges. Yeah. It was Jeremy, <laughs> Missy, and then Julie out, and then Reed, Baylor, Alec, Jacqueline, Natalie, and then the final round was Josh versus John versus Wes and then Keith. That's the first time I've ever heard you say versus. Versus, verse, or verses? <laughs> it's yeah. verses, yeah. Verses. You always say verse. Um, I give Keith That's credit. He, he brought out a verse. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to go into the Bible of Survivor. <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, it was it was kind of you know a classic endurance challenge. You know, I love endurance challenges because everyone's on the same playing field for the most part, and then we just get to wait and see who can last the longest. And in pain, it's always about pain. One of the elements in this endurance challenge was the wind. wind. Yeah, was crazy. That happens a lot, though. You wind. saw the sand twirling behind them and the the flags just flapping very rapidly. Yeah, the wind was crazy in this, and especially I'm when you're trying to balance everybody balls. Everybody didn't go out. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if everybody did go out. And Jeff is like, "Okay, you guys, pick up the balls. <laughs> we need a winner here." <laughs> Do you? What did you think of? I guess it would have probably been impossible to have them when they had to move back to still try and balance and move. Like you guys have thirty seconds or a minute to move your rope uh, instead of just dropping and getting a break. Yeah, no, it would have been too hard. Yeah, everybody would have gone out. Everybody would have gone out in that. And moment. that required a, a lot of steadiness. Yeah. So, you know, first immunity challenge, Keith got it. I go, Keith, that was good, but he's in. And he beat his son on his birthday. I, and I find my, I thought if there was a moment where I thought he was going to let go and say, happy birthday, son. Yeah. That would have been stupid. That would have been cute. Yeah. It's, it's one or the other, yeah. you know. Yeah, but I like that he, it was, he beat his son. He took yeah. his son out. He said, out. I ain't ready to turn over the reins yet. It's like when Tina beat Katie in, on Redemption Island, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that sort of thing. And then we get all the debacle of, <laughs> it's just, I found myself really rooting in my mind. Okay, if they're going to tribal council, I found myself really rooting for Jeremy. Really rooting for yeah, Jeremy to pull through. I think Josh is playing a great game, but there is kind of, as I, I'm rooting for Jeremy right now, but I think Josh will prevail. 
And did you notice once again, like this is just what, two episodes after uh, they traded all their comforts in for a bunch of oh. rice. And now this time there's like this huge spread of food. It's yeah. like all the food in the world just keeps getting thrown in their face. Like you guys gave up all your comfort. It really is. <laughs> there's still food everywhere. Knowing that the merge was coming mm-hmm. in three days. Well, I don't or, think they knew that. No, the producers. Oh. Why did they give that bag of rice? Well, you know, I it's think like, that's why they did it. Because they knew that it would look, make them look even more stupid uh, if they gave up everything. The, I think but like it, I said, it this been is going to get didn't. very interesting because if it continues to rain at some point, they don't have a tarp. They don't mm-hmm. have any comforts. They don't have anything to make life a little bit easier. Yeah. And I'm telling you, a tarp is a difference between sleeping at night and not sleeping. And when people don't yeah. sleep, things get really, really crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's an interesting dynamic now, and it is the question of this probably did buy Jeremy three more days. It I hope seemed, so, yeah. Because Josh even said once they <clears throat> didn't go to tribal council, there was a confessional where Josh said, you know, tonight Jeremy thought he was going to be safe and I was going to go home, but I'm telling you it was an 80% chance that Jeremy was going to go home, 20% I was going to go home. We were going to take him out tonight. So yeah, Josh... But he doesn't know. No, but that's... He was so confident that John and Jacqueline, um, you know, were going to be on their side, which... You know three what weeks to people when they get confident. I know. Well, I wrote <laughs> down, even in my... Remember, like, right... Jeremy, after the merge, after he talked to everybody, said, I feel safe. When he said that, I was like, no, you're going home. <laughs> you know, it said, I whole feel safe. Never say the words, Never. I feel safe. Never. And... I do give credit. This is now the third week in a row where John and Jacqueline have been the deciding vote. They are the ones making the decisions. They're the ones in the middle. It's like the season, I feel like, in the uh, the Philippines with Mike Scoopin and Lisa Wenchel. Welchel. Welchel. Oh, my gosh. Wenchel. <laughs> <laughs> I love Lisa Welchel. Why did I say Wenchel? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm fired up. We're good. <laughs> uh, Lisa, I love her on Survivor. Didn't really watch the facts of life. Uh, oh, you missed out. Yeah. But it was that season in the Philippines, those two were constantly in the middle in whatever way they decided to vote was who went home. You know what I thought was also funny? There was a lot of funny moments throughout this episode. Yeah. To, like, I guess, counterbalance yeah, the quitting our thing. anger. But uh, John and Jacqueline, when they found out the merge was happening, John said, oh, would you still, nobody will date oh, anybody yes. who doesn't make the merge. He yes. totally quoted Cat, which yes. I thought was hilarious. I thought of Cat immediately. Yeah. I'm like, oh, we should have had her on tonight. That was, yeah, he, he did the classic, <laughs> oh, honey, we can still date in the, the Cat reference, which shows me he's a, a Survivor fan, which I like. Yeah. Or unless he did a quick, you know, I think he's a fan if he knows that. Well, he probably watched blood versus water for sure or yeah he definitely watched blood versus water so yeah. he knows that reference but that was cute that was good they're yeah. this all-american couple the, <laughs> the blue-eyed beauties from michigan from michigan the midwest blue-eyed beauties <laughs> that was uh, a great moment um and yeah i have i mean i was just gonna go back to a, something i had uh that jeff asked about the relationship with julie and rocker and being apart is just what we don't do Oh, my God. She's like, we haven't been apart more than four days. Yeah. That is disgusting. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. That is, like, so codependent and weak. I can't. I mean, when I hear stories of people like that, I'm just like, oh, my. You know what? You need to be away with from this person for a lot longer than that so you can get to know who you are. Because yeah. it is clear, you know, it's like cutting off her limb when he got sent home, apparently, because like... <laughs> Four days. Oh my gosh, I can't. I just can't even fathom that whole. Well, idea. and then you look at the twenties. <laughs> Natalie, um, she's still in the game, and she and her sister. She's fine. She's totally fine. I, yeah. I like that she's a gamer. Maybe if Natalie had talked to Julie and said, "Look, you know, lady, here's the deal. You know, my twin, who's my twin, yeah. and has been with me my entire life. Look at me. I'm fine. Yeah. Like I think you're gonna you're gonna live. Yeah, and I I hope that. You know, even though Jeremy and Natalie don't have their loved ones, you are disgusted. I'm just like, uh. Even though Jeremy and Natalie don't have their loved ones, they basically, and she even said it, they're like each other's loved ones. Yeah. You know, so it is like they are like a pair. So everyone's, I don't think, we've never seen a season, we've never had a season, clearly with, besides the other Blood versus Water, but with so many paired off 
uh, like given alliances, you know. So now it's the battle of how are the the couples going to align and not align. And do you think? Do you see any of these couples splitting off? Like next week, John and Jacqueline don't agree. One of them, I think, is just going to compromise and go with the other one versus them voting against what each other want to do. Yeah. Do yeah. Think- I think it's more likely that people who are dating will probably vote together than people who are. Like I swear, I thought for a moment I saw a fracture with Missy and, and Baylor. Baylor. I thought, ooh, maybe this could be the turning point where yeah. they both kind of like respect each other mm-hmm. and then do their own thing. I don't foresee. Do you foresee any of these loved ones left splitting their votes ever or going against <laughs> each other? I don't foresee At it. At some point, they're going to have to. That's the thing. And that, I mean, that's going to be interesting. Could we see two loved ones in the final two? Uh, it's possible. I think we could see Josh and Reed in the final two. <sighs> Yeah, I don't. I, that would make this whole thing like really drag for a long time. I know. Time. I hope we don't see that. I know. <laughs> no. And in the argument again that oh, no one's gonna vote for Broadway stars compared to a fireman. Nobody cares what their job is. Yeah. Everybody in the end, hopefully, is gonna look at the game they played and vote who played the game best, which they did last season with Tony. Yeah. Tony versus Wu. Tony kicked butt. They voted for Tony. Yeah. Even though he backstabbed them all. So hopefully that'll happen again. <laughs> But you it's, know, it's, and it's not about backstabbing. It's how you do it's it. Being strategic. If you do it with class and yeah. respect, then it's it's going to be a lot more well received from yeah. the jury than yeah. if you're just a jerk about it. No yeah. names, but it's happened in the past several times where people yeah. kind of like <clears throat> rub people's face in it. Yeah. People don't like that. They don't like it. Jerry, uh, real quick, you had a video. Can we show that video real quick, Marissa? You tell everybody you're doing dream jobbing. Yeah, I'm. Ryan did the whole dream jobbing thing, and now I'm up for a TV producer position. Uh, so if you oh. guys go to my uh, website, jerrymanthe.com, there's a link there. And just go vote for this video okay. every day and help me win. Right now I'm in first place. You are. Oh, my but gosh. I, yeah, but I need people to keep me in first place. I've been so. voting. I didn't realize you were in first because I didn't look at all the other vote numbers. Yeah. All right. Keep voting yeah. for Jerry. So here's my special Hi video. Hi, everybody. I'm Jerry Manthe, and I need your help. Now, one of my dream jobs is to be a TV producer on the CBS hit comedy, The Millers. Why me? Well, I've produced some pretty amazing things in my life. <laughs> This is the long version. <laughs> it's like 30 seconds long. I produced an egg. <laughs> oh, blood. And some lamb chops. <laughs> Toothpick. And I know I've got what it takes to be a really great producer. I am awesome at time management and budgeting. Hello? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing calling me at 2 o'clock in the afternoon? Oh, all right. Today we have to rent the camera. Okay, um, just rent the most expensive one. All right. That's the budgeting. And I am excellent at multitasking. <laughs> oh my gosh. I really oh fell down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sacrificing your body. And because of my experience as an actress, I'm really good at communicating with actors. Hold on. Oh my God, these two suck. They're horrible. <laughs> so come on, you guys, Good. vote for me, please. Your votes are what are going to help me get my dream job. And I have never asked you guys for anything before, so you know this is very, very important <laughs> to me. So if there's any confusion, go to jerrymanthe.com. I'll give you all the links to all the places you can vote for this video. I but love most it. importantly, you need to vote for me on dreamjobbing.com on the appropriate page so that your vote really counts. Please, it's up to you, and I really need you guys. Begging. Come on! Oh, I have you no know shame. I love you. <laughs> uh, so, how many more days for the voting? Um, I think there's like 18 days, All something right. like that. So, well, good luck. Yeah, just uh, get yep. on there, you guys, and vote, please. I've never asked you guys for anything. I've signed uh, so many things in my lifetime, and this is just something that's really important well, to me. Vote for Jerry. Jerry, where else can people find you on Twitter? Yeah, you can find me at Jerry Manthe. Awesome. You can find me at Justin F. Walter. We'll be talking more Survivor next week. And sound off on what you guys thought of uh, this last episode of Survivor. Thank you, guys. (laughs) From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.